Hey everyone, it's Eric Huey, host of the Gen Y Leaders Podcast, where we prepare millennials to be leaders of the future. Now, if you're familiar with the podcast, you know that it's usually interview-based, and we tell the success stories of high-performing millennials. Each time, I tend to ask a couple of the same questions. Not all the same questions, because that would be a boring podcast, but there are a key one to two questions that I ask every guest on the show. And one of those is, what books or resources have made a positive impact in your life or in your business? Books are such incredible resources because they take years upon years of people's successes and failures and condense them into a few hours of reading. The mission of the book breakdown is to take those few hours of reading and then further condense them into 15 minutes or less of listening. This is the Gen Y Leader Podcast Book Breakdown. I'm Ryan Bennett, and I'm the founder of The Intentional Day. I get to teach people how to be more intentional with their life, their businesses, and their teams. So before we get into one of my favorite books and talk about it, let me give you 60 seconds to tell you a little bit about who I am. I am first and foremost a husband and a soon-to-be father. I have a little baby girl coming here in a few months, and we're very excited about our first child. I got my start running a tech startup in Silicon Valley, and I became a statistic when that business failed after a few years. After that defeat, I spent months of internal reflection and growth and had the opportunity to join a few others to found a successful venture-backed startup. Taking what I learned from both my failures and my successes, I now get to teach others how living intentionally is really the only way to turn failures into successes. So, a little bit about me. Now, let's talk about the book. I picked the book Wooden on Leadership. And because there's so many business leadership books out there, though, and they're all full of tactics and other kind of ideas of how to be a good leader. And so, this is one of my favorite books, Wooden on Leadership by John Wooden, because he focuses on the principles that he uses in his own life and how he lived out these principles and how he applied these principles to lead hundreds to possibly thousands of high achieving people, including some Hall of Fame athletes and Hall of Fame coaches. So if you don't know who John Wooden, let me give you a little blurb about John Wooden. So he's one of the winningest basketball coaches in the history of college basketball. He basically brought UCLA from nothing into a complete powerhouse during his tenure. And he won 10 national championships in 12 years. Seven of those in a row, which is just absolutely incredible. And he had a record, an 88-game winning streak. But here's my favorite part of the whole thing, is that John Wooden was notorious about never talking about winning. He solely focused on what each player and each person can do each day to become the best version of themselves that day. So today, we aren't really going to talk about sports Even though I love sports, this is not what this is about. We're going to talk about three of my favorite principles from the book. One, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Second, how enemy is actually your enemy. And last is why you shouldn't actually look at the scoreboard. We have all maybe have heard this principle, but John Wooden really lived it out. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So John Wooden was a basketball coach. So back in 1947, he actually was coaching the Indiana State team. And they were a small school, but they had a good basketball team, and they were invited to what was then sort of the NCAA March Madness basketball tournaments. However, the basketball tournament prohibited African Americans from playing and John Wooden had a few African Americans on his team and so he actually turned down the invitation to go to the college basketball tournament because they wouldn't accept one of his players because he didn't think it was right and he didn't think it was right to leave out his teammate and leave out his partner on the team and so he turned it down and and as a coach he had to tell his players that the season was over and that we're not going to the NCAA tournament and so fast forward to the next year The same exact thing happened. Indiana State had a great year. They got invited to what was then known as the NCAA basketball tournament, and the exact same thing happened. John Wooden backed out and said, no, we're not coming because you won't let all my players play. But this time was different. This time they actually, the, the tournament 
actually gave in and let African Americans play for the first time. And John Wooden's Indiana State team ended up making it all the way to the national championship game, and but unfortunately lost to Louisville. So this story resonates of why it matters to care about your people. So as John Wooden says in his book, if you don't think of your team as a family, why should the team think of you as head of the family? John Wooden says, it took me a while to learn this lesson, but it is true. You must have love and respect for those under your leadership if your team's going to fire on all cylinders. We live in a cynical age. Don't let cynicism preclude love or lead you to believe those under your leadership are simply interchangeable parts to be used and discard, discarded. People want to be seen and heard. I think we're seeing that all over the world today. So what are you doing to hear from your team today? What are you doing as a leader to truly show your people that you care? How are you going to create a wow moment for one of your team members to show them that you really, really do care about them? Are you going to pause and actually think about what they need and what is best for them? What are you going to intentionally put in action today to show the people that you really do care about? Because nobody cares how much you know or how smart you are or your title until they know how much you care about them. The second principle I really loved in this book was the idea that emotion is your enemy. And that first struck me because I was like, wait a minute, that's not, that can't be right. But what I understood was that this isn't about ignoring your emotions or stuffing them deep down inside. But actually what John Wooden is talking about is a very high level of emotional intelligence where you understand your emotions and you have control over emotions and your emotions aren't actually driving your behavior. This is a highly emotionally intelligent person. So to quote from John Wooden in his book, intensity makes you stronger, emotionalism makes you weaker. The leader who doesn't know the difference between intensity and emotionalism may succeed on occasion, but the success will usually not be repeatable, reliable, or ongoing. So I don't know how many of you guys may know of the famous basketball coach, Bobby Knight. And so Bobby Knight was an Indian ambassador basketball coach known for his fiery personality. He won three national championships and had pretty successful teams there in Indiana. The thing that kind of sticks with most people is the incident where he threw a chair onto the court and got fired. It was, you can see the pictures on ESPN all the time. And he was just notorious about being fiery in his, guy, his guys' faces and the referees' faces with the press after the game. To contrast that is, is John Wooden. And he would be seen on the sidelines sitting in his chair calmly with his rolled up paper in his hand and never really talking or yelling at his team. He wasn't even doing much teaching because he believed most of that should have been done in practice, that the game is ready for the execution. And John Wooden repeated his success over and over. He was repeatable, he was reliable, and his success was ongoing. And so as John Wooden says in his book, the hallmark of successful leadership is consistently maximum performance. Emotionalism opens a leader up to inconsistency. Seek intensity, but coupled with emotional discipline. Display those behaviors and then demand them from those you lead. A leader with a volatile temperament is vulnerable, and so is the team that he or she leads. Cultivate consistency. That's what he's talking about. So cultivate consistency by understanding ourselves more and what emotions are driving our behavior. Because consistency was, was what's bring us to success in the long run. So how do we actually increase our emotional intelligence? And that's really what he's taught. That's really what Wooden's talking about is emotional intelligence. There's a few things. One, you could take the emotional intelligence 2.0 test. You can buy the book, take the test, and it'll give you results on the four main categories of emotional intelligence. And you can, they give you tactics on how to improve that because you can improve your emotional intelligence. The second thing is that you can have to understand your emotions. You can't increase your intelligence until you understand what your emotions are. And so I actually struggle with this piece a lot. And so I carry a little card in my wallet that has all the emotions on them. 
And so that way, what if I'm feeling something, I can't pinpoint what it is and why it's driving my behavior. I'll pause, take out the card, and point to the emotion. And from there, then I can operate out of it. I can understand, is it based on false fact? Is it true? Does it suck? But then how to operate out correctly. The last thing I do, like a, like a great athlete, do they watch film? So the last thing I do is I try to watch film each day on one of the conversations I had. And I try to replay that conversation in my head and pick up what I missed. Pick up, try to increase my emotional intelligence by picking up what I missed. And then from there, after I realize what I missed, then I can say, okay, in that situation, again, what would I do differently this time? And that has helped me increase my emotional intelligence. And so what I take away from this is emotion is the enemy, is that we need to intentionally focus on our emotional intelligence because out of control emotions are what our enemy is really, is what our enemy is. The last principle in the book, and it's kind of mind boggling that a college basketball coach says this, but his principles don't look at the scoreboard. Wooden never talked about winning the game. In fact, his players would tell you that sometimes they would win a game but they didn't play their best, and the co- he would be upset at them. He would be disappointed that they didn't play up to their potential. And there's also other times where wouldn't that the teams would, would have lost. Probably rare, but they lost, but they played their absolute best. And John Wooden would be proud of them and happy. And I don't know about you guys, I've been on a bus after a loss, and it's not a fun place to be. You, you can't really laugh. You can't smile. Your coach is upset. It's just a negative atmosphere to be in. And so this idea that you don't look at the scoreboard, you focus on whether you played well or not, it's just so different than we hear today. And as John Wooden says in his book, a good leader determines what occupies the team's attention, what they work on and worry about. This process begins with what you, the leader, are preoccupied with. The scoreboard, championships, a sales quota, the bottom line, and in an organization, a team that's always looking up at the scoreboard will find a worthy opponent stealing the ball right out from under you. You must keep your eye on the ball, not on the scoreboard, or somewhere out in the distant future. This task, however, is not always easy to do. Distractions are prevalent today. You have likes, you got promotions, you got other jobs, there's influencers around you. It's very hard to figure out what do you actually want and how do I go achieve it. So think about it. What are your main activities that move you towards hitting your goals and focus just on those activities. Also, it's just as important is to to identify what are the distractions. What's your your scoreboard taking you away from where you want to go? So intentionally focus on what you control to develop yourself into the person you want to become so that the score will take care of itself. Guys, this was so much fun. Thank you for allowing me to spend a few minutes with you, sharing with you some of my favorite topics to talk about and one of my favorite authors. John Wooden has many more books if you're interested. Please go on Amazon and check that out. And also, please feel free to reach out to me at ryan at theintentionalday.com. Thank you all, guys. <laughs>